Professor Charan just shared his experiences of implementing Universal Human Values course at Bikaner Technical University. Almost similar experiences I had when I was Vice Chancellor at Punjab Technical University. In this session, I have uh, 25 minutes. At 10 o'clock, we are expecting our chief guest, Professor T.G. Sitaramji, chairman, AICT. He will address today's uh, LDP online. So as soon as he joins, I will have a break. If necessary, I will continue after his address. I am to share with you regarding this effort of inculcation of values and professional ethics. As academicians, what are our aspirations and what are our efforts in the current situation? When we talk about our aspirations and the actual current situation, we find in ourselves Next slide, please. Okay. Okay. Mike. Is it okay? Uh -huh, okay. What is I think the distance is far. You can operate it from laptop itself. When we observe in our Within ourselves, we find our aspirations. Individual level, it is, for all of us, it is happiness and prosperity. And not only for some time, but happiness and prosperity in continuity. This is the basic aspiration of human beings. And as, when we see our aspirations collectively, we all, are looking for a humane society all around us. Not now, but from generations to generations, we are looking forward to a humane society. And as an academic institution, we all intend to have, to emerge as world-class institution, producing skilled graduates that will best serve the world and for the betterment of mankind. All of us have similar vision because we have same aspiration in our mind. At the level of aspiration, we are all same, whether we are in North or in South, whether we are in India or outside India, in any part of the world, the aspiration is same. But the current situation, when we see towards it, next. At individual level, we see stress, tension, and inhumane conduct. And at the collective level, rivalries in relationship. Professor Charan was talking about that, his experience. We all have similar experiences in our neighborhood, in our workplace. And at the global level, we are seeing the challenges of global warming and climate change. And we go deeper into it. The reasons behind all such concerns and problems we find the education is crucial to realize our aspirations and also to deal with all these challenges and problems. If we look forward, if we delve into it at the level of education, we will find the results which start changing out because it is the education which is the root cause for human conduct. Next. The core issue is about what is our world vision? How do we perceive world around us? 
what is the perception within ourselves about the world because as per our own perception and as per our own vision we find what is valuable for us what is not valuable for us so that is uh, crucial for having our own values our values are dependent on our own world vision and as per our world vision and values our efforts are going to that direction our conduct is as per our own vision and as per our own values now when i say world vision as i say that it is regarding our perception of the world and values are about what is really valuable for us what is our role in the whole surroundings and in today's context when we see what is happening in our educational institutions we find next uh, rajul ji aapko wahan shayad kuch dena padega we find that in case of all other elements in the nature whether is at the materials or animals plants trees soil water the conduct is definite it is naturally it is predetermined but in the case of human beings it depends upon the education it depends upon the sanskar in the family and for that we have to make efforts in our families in our educational institutions it is not definite just like all other units in the nature so that's the reason that in order to have human conduct we need to have human education human education leads to holistic humane world vision and that leads to human values and then as per our vision and values we look forward to have those skills so that we can live with human conduct and with such human conduct it leads to definiteness and it leads to human society so the whole thing starts from human education and if it is not there the current situation the kind of inhuman conduct which we are seeing all around us and we are confused about what kind of skills are required to live with that human conduct and because of that lack of understanding we are finding indefinite and inhuman conduct and that results into inhuman society so that is the importance of education to have inhuman to have human society all around so for this we find that this is the crucial missing link the missing link of to have an holistic human world vision and to have values as per that vision so to fulfill this crucial component we have uh, started this effort of inculcation of universal human values in our curriculum for all the courses in the university not only engineering it started with technical education but it is required in all education whether it is social sciences or technical or management legal medical agriculture etc this education plus reinforcement and exemplification of living in harmony as professor charan was mentioning if we don't put it into practice it is not effective only theory on the basis of just textbook will not work it has to be reinforced with the right kind of examples with right kind of case studies and uh, case studies of local regional and national values and in our local language in our regional language and then as per our values we are to learn those skills which are people friendly and nature friendly so that we can have those systems and then practice those uh, uh, skills human friendly and people friendly skills and systems we have to now this is not the new thing if we start seeing the different education committees and different uh, uh, so many commissions i have started that list from 1882 till 2017 any report of any education committee any education commission any policy statement 
you will find that everyone is talking about the need of value education, need of value education. In our own preamble of constitution, we see, we talk about freedom, fraternity, equality, etc. Then the latest documents of UGC, AICT, they all talk about Mulle Prava, inculcation of human values and professional ethics. This is the UGC latest document. This is AICT document. And not only in India, but internationally, when we see UN document on sustainable development goals, they also talk about the value education at the core of to achieve those sustainable development goals. And Professor Radha Krishnanji's eminent uh, education is our second president of India was from Tamil Nadu. He has also talked about the importance of value education. And uh, we see with this situation, it is imperative to appreciate the different approaches and different achievements. But the goal is common. We can have different approaches. So whatever we are talking here in this UHV course, uh, which is being implemented in different universities, this is one of the approaches. We have to evaluate it on our own right. Next. This whole effort, what we perceive that all great people in the world, in India or in different parts of the world, they have seen on their own that they have realized the truth and tried to live it in terms of love and compassion. They have tried to understand themselves as human beings. They have tried to understand the underlying harmony in nature and in existence. And this whole existence is having an underlying harmony in it. We have to learn to live by that harmony. And they have tried to understand the role of human being in nature and in existence, to live by it and to develop a tolerant, humane, and socially cohesive society. So in that tradition of pursuing towards truth, love, and compassion, India has always made effort for the well-being of all. It is firmly grounded based on a deep understanding of human beings as well, of, as, well as of the underlying harmony in nature and entire existence. This effort current effort on universal human values is in continuation with that tradition of self-development and for the well-being of all. It starts with self-development, but it leads to well-being of all. The basic guidelines of value education course, this current course, there are four basic guidelines. One is, it is universal in nature. It is not limited to any sect creed, nationality, race, gender. It is applicable everywhere in any part of the world, whether it is Asia or Australia, America or Africa or Europe. The kind of values which we talk in our universal human values course, it is universal in nature. It is rational in nature. It appeals to human reasoning. It is amenable to logical reasoning. It is not based on any just do's and don'ts or of blind beliefs. It is verifiable. The student is able to verify the values on one's own right. That when he or she has self-exploration, he finds, he can verify all those things. They are not just beliefs, but they are just shared, stated in the course. They are not asked to believe it. They are not, they are shared as proposals to the students. And it leads to harmony at all levels. Values that enable us to live in peace and harmony within our own self, as well as with others, human beings and rest of nature. So these four guidelines are really important. So I'll give you just one example of the having the feel, feeling of trust. It is valuable in relationship with human beings. The basic basis of the relationship within human beings is trust. The trust means, and this is a universal value, and it means to be assured of the other. I have a trust 
that means i am assured of the other with a feeling of trust one can see that they are related to other and accept the other as similar to oneself the other person is also similar to me that is the reason that i can have trust and i am assured of him or her they do not want to make other happy even though they may be lacking in competence to do so the other person does not intend to make me unhappy he or she may or may not be able to do that that is a question of competence that is not the question of intention we'll talk about it in detail in the next session when kumar sambhav ji will discuss it with us having the feeling of trust leads to making effort for mutual happiness mutual fulfillment absence of feeling of trust when we don't have trust within ourselves that leads to opposition domination which leads to unhappiness trust is a universal human value this is a basic human value with a feeling of trust assuming uh, assuring the dignity of individuals is a nature natural outcome similarly gender equality is a natural at outcome without understanding trust neither of these is likely at least not in continuity for example in our constitution of in that preamble of our constitution we talk about fraternity which is defined as having assuring dignity of individual and unity of nation now fraternity is the natural outcome when we have trust within ourselves i and similarly in united nations sustainable development goals they talk about gender equality gender equality is possible and it is natural when we understand trust within ourselves so this is just one example i have uh, shared with you the it is not only the content of value education which is important it is a process of value education is also important here we don't uh, go about the instructions or stick and carrot kind of system if you do this you will be rewarded if you don't do it you will be punished so that is a general do's and don'ts kind of thing and it is not preaching because you are indian you should do this because you are now 12 years old you should not do this you are now you are girl so you should do this it is not preaching it is not instructions but it is it is it is put forth to the students as proposals and they are encouraged to have self exploration within uh, themselves we encourage the students to discover that what they consider valuable according to accordingly they are able to discriminate between the valuable and the superficial in the real situation the reference point is one's own natural acceptance which is naturally accepted to me they are encouraged to think about who am i what is my purpose what is my role with myself what is my role with my body what is my role in the family what is my role in the society what is my role in nature and existence so these kind of things are discussed with the students and instead of just having one way uh, preaching or one way lecturing it is a very much interactive sessions in the classes of universal human values now this whole experiment started in last so many years i was fortunate when i was doing my pre phd course at iit delhi uh, two professors of mechanical engineering professor r r god and professor p l dhar they introduced the course in 1982 first semester science and humanism at iit delhi and i was student in that uh, first uh, session and uh, then they continued to pursue in it the basic thing in their mind was our students of iits are just going abroad after getting so much government subsidy in their higher education and excellent education and uh, we need to have uh, some value education in them and all those efforts led to the uh, ministry of human resource development in 2001 they created national resource centers in value education at iit delhi at ncert and i am lucknow and then further the efforts led in 2005 triple iit hyderabad experiment with experimented with mandatory two semester course on universal human values in 
UP Technical University, now known as Abdul Kalam Technical University, uh, they implemented it in all the affiliated 550 colleges in 2009. In 2011, I at Punjab Technical University also scaled it up and implemented it in all the universities. And the very good experience was in 2012 in Bhutan. Uh, they implemented it in their all colleges and schools. And because uh, they found it, it was deeply resonating with their national concept of gross national happiness. We all know about the Bhutan's gross national happiness uh, thing. Uh, 2012, Himachal Pradesh Technical University. 2018, uh, Bikaner Technical University, Professor Charan implemented it. And I am happy to share that in 2014, uh, we had an international conference at in Punjab, in my university, where uh, four vice chancellors from Pakistan and two deans and registrar from another two universities, they participated and they said that this content and this process, we can easily implement it in Pakistan also. And that is the experience which we are having in 2017, when 40 plus universities in 10 states were implementing it, then AICT took it as a, a national, uh, they included it in their national model curriculum. So now uh, it is mandatory to have UHV courses for the all AICT approved colleges for their engineering uh, courses. So this is just the background efforts uh, which started the uh, 1980s kind of thing. Next. And uh, I would just like to share a few uh, encouraging impacts. Uh, currently, a formal uh, impact study. Okay, I've been told that uh, Chairman AICT has already joined. So we'll listen to Professor T.G. Sitaramji. Then I'll continue with a few more slides. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor T.G. Sitaram has really made my work easy because the kind of uh, information which I was going to share, he has already uh, shared with all of you. Uh, and I am also uh, thankful to Professor Vinrajji, uh, respectable Vice Chancellor, Anna University, to assure that he will be implementing this course in Anna University and other affiliated colleges. As Professor Sitaramji was uh, mentioning about the IRMA study, the impact study which uh, they have conducted in different institutions regarding the impact of universal human values course, uh, the students and the teachers and the institutions, they have shared uh, uh, very valuable and encouraging uh, results as far as uh, clarity of purpose, clarity of uh, things like happiness, prosperity, etc. And their commitment towards excellence and a deep sense of gratitude for commitment towards elders and human culture. All these things uh, by students and the faculty members at the individual level. And institutions uh, have shared that they have seen increased employability of students, enhanced responsibility and teamwork in students, and reduced faculty attrition. That means the development in students as well as faculty, that is the kind of thing which uh, institutions have felt. So I'm not just reading out. This whole PPT will be shared with all of you by the organizers. Next. Because already we are short of time, we have to do. Uh, I'm happy to share with you that Professor APJ Abdul Kalam, when he was uh, president of India, he mentioned about this universal human values effort in his uh, 2006 uh, Independence Day address to the nation. And he was very much interested for this whole effort and he used to discuss uh, with the UHV team about uh, encouraging and about uh, taking it forward to all the institutions. So he spoke in this nation address to the nation. From this value education comes inevitably a totally different order in human relationship and therefore society as a whole, the intelligent understanding of this process itself can bring about a profound change in consciousness of mankind. This was, this is part of that uh, in the 
in 2006, 14th August, address to the nation. When we conducted a three-day workshop in 2017 in uh, uh, Bhutan, then at that time, Her Majesty, the Queen Mother of Bhutan, uh, she participated in it and she was uh, chief guest in 2018. I was present in that conference in 2018 and she shared her experiences of attending three-day uh, UHV workshop in 2017. And because of that kind of uh, experience, it was easy to implement it in whole of Bhutan in their whole education system. Next. And uh, you have already heard from Professor T.G. Sitaram and similar voices we have heard from the earlier uh, chairman uh, AICT, now he's chairman of, uh, uh, executive chairman of NAC and chairman uh, of National Commission for Technology in Education, Professor Anil Sahasra Buddhaji and Professor Dharmendra, uh, Shri Dharmendra Pradhan, who's Honorable Education Minister, Government of India. He has also shared his views similarly. Already uh, these things have been shared by T.G. Sitaramji. This whole effort is with a vision to have human education for a human society. Human education for a human society. And the program is three steps program. Starting with value education. Next step is value-based education. That means the whole education, whether we are studying physics, chemistry, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, sociology, economics, the whole education needs to be value-based education. Today, we are preparing our students for market. So let us prepare our students for life. So that is the second step to have value-based education. And it has to be in our life. So it will lead to value-based living in the society. Value education, value-based education, and value-based living. And regarding the process, this process is not of preaching. This is a process of self-exploration, to see truth within ourselves. And uh, now we have all the academic resource material, all the teaching learning material, as Professor Sita Ramji mentioned. We already have 16 books, 8 courses, 12 FDPs. These 8 courses are 3 credit courses. And as per AICT and UGC, if a student does 20 extra credits during his or her degree, so they can get minor degree in universal human values also. Uh, minor degree has already been approved by AICT in their model curriculum. So, but we have to start with the basic foundation course, UHV 1, UHV 2, etc. Then we can go further. And uh, I have been told by uh, President Rajul Asanaji that already uh, we are in the process of translating this whole textbook in Tamil also. Uh, this is uh, the part of the program of uh, AICT. And uh, when I was Vice Chancellor at Punjab Technical University, at that time we translated it in Punjabi also. And it became easy to take it forward to the students and uh, teachers also. Uh, as Professor Sita Ramji mentioned, that this whole effort is being done pro bono. All the volunteers, all the teachers, all the resource persons, those who are working uh, as in this whole effort, they are not taking any honorarium for any purpose. Uh, this whole thing is pro bono. It's a gift to the society. That is uh, the real beauty of this course, uh, this whole effort. And currently, we have 500 plus volunteers all over the country in almost all the states of the country we have. And uh, because of effort of continuous effort of last five years, uh, more than 75,000 teachers have been trained. But the interest is uh, continuously increasing. In these courses, online or offline workshops, more than 2 lakh registrations from 191 universities in the country we got and we have been able to do it for this. Now, you are the custodians of future of education and technical education in the nation. We trust you will participate actively today during the day. We will have three more sessions. It is pertinent to recall that the content is universal, 
rational and the processes of self verification and self exploration and it leads to understanding and living in harmony we have to understand harmony and we have to live in harmony it will help further refine your view about this effort its desirability its potential and we look forward to hearing from you and your commitment thank you thank you very much